What's up? I'm Skylar Gray, and this is Rewind TV. In 2006, I put out an album under my old name and was signed to Warner Brothers through Linkin Park. Had a song called Where'd You Go with Fort Minor. After that, I actually got a publisher around that same time, but uh, everything else crumbled. I was just so naive, I didn't know how to be in the music industry. So, uh, for a couple years, I actually legally couldn't release any music. And being an artist, that's like the most painful position to be in. So it sent me into depression and writer's block, and I ended up leaving LA because it was too expensive. I started moving north and ended up in Oregon, uh, living in a cabin in the woods. And I had a little recording studio that I took with me so that I could just be creative, but not answer to anybody, not have to rely on a producer or a studio or anything like that. Just be self-sufficient. I wanted to be self-sufficient in every area of life. I wanted to be able to, you know, keep myself warm by chopping wood or whatever I had to do to just be on my own in the world. Basically every song actually off my album was inspired by this time period in my life where I, I went through a major change. It was like, I think everybody goes through that at some point in their lives where they live alone for the first time or something. And it's a very empowering ex experience. And that's why I came out of the woods thinking, okay, I'm not Holly anymore. I need to change my name. So I changed my name to Skylar Gray. Gray um, is my favorite color. And that's because it represents the unknowns in life which is scary to some people, but to me, it's not. It's where all your possibilities lie. And uh, Skylar came from the sky, gray skies. Uh, that's where I, I feel most creative when it's raining, stormy, sad. I grew up listening to like the weirdest eclectic mixture of things. Um, my mom was a Celtic harpist, my dad was in a barbershop quartet, and then my sister would buy, you know, pop records or rock records from the 90s, so I was listening to Garbage and Smashing Pumpkins, Nirvana, and then she had like some weird ones thrown in there, like Celine Dion and Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston. I was singing folk songs when I was younger. So there was no hip hop to be found in my childhood. But I did buy Marshall Mathers LP and hit it for my parents because it was explicit, obviously. Uh, so that was one album I did have. So Eminem, I knew who he was. And he's a real artist. People like him don't come around very often. Intelligent, really inspiring to be around. His work ethic is insane too. And then Dr. Dre, one of the sweetest guys I've ever met, totally down to earth. Um, I, it really surprised me how gracious he was. When I first met him, it was via email, and did love the way you lie via email. I was living in the woods in Oregon, in my studio, is where I, I wrote the song. and. Um, and then, when we met in person to write, we did do some good stuff, but it's always more comfortable for us working, I think, to not be in the same room together. <laughs> and plus, like, if a uh, music aside, if you took the two of us and put us in a room together, we probably wouldn't end up being friends. Not that we don't like each other, it's just there's not really much in common there, but for some reason, the music side, uh, we have such a great chemistry. And I didn't want to go out and work with a ton of different producers because I like things to, to be cohesive and tell a story. Um, and I also think that working on music is a very intimate type of thing to do with somebody. Even though it's just the two of us, every song sounds completely different. It's really diverse because we pushed each other beyond where we thought we could go.
spelled with an S, which was Marilyn Manson's idea. Uh, I was in the studio, or his house, um, with him, and we were talking about my album, and um, I had said I was thinking of calling my album Invisible, and that was the first single. But my fear with that was that the feeling, the emotion behind it is a weak perspective. And I, uh, the whole album actually tells the story of how I became strong. So I didn't want to title it something weak, you know? And so he's like, well, why don't you call it Invincible and spell it with an S? So that people can, you know, see that, that transition in one word. <laughs>